Hello everybody. Just sitting out in the car waiting for my friend who's currently in the ER right now. Um nothing serious. Nothing too serious. Just problems with their well, she was having problems with her foot and she feels a little dizzy and stuff, so she's in the hospital right now. So we're just waiting on her to come back out. Um so that's why I'm doing a video because passing the time. Let's see how long do we have? Oh, it says fifty minutes, huh? It's a really nice day outside. I just currently rewatched the Underworld series and fall in love with it all over again. It's just one of the best series ever made. <clears throat> they did such a dramatically excellent job and it is such wonderful storytelling and such great movies. They're severely underrated. <clears throat> so. And I rewatched Aladdin, the live action version of Aladdin again, and I love it just as much as I loved it the first time watching it, and the first, well, the first few times watching it. Um. I really hope that they make a second one soon because they did such an excellent job with the first one. Really excited about American Horror Story. They're doing two seasons in one, which is really exciting. <clears throat> This past year, well, 2020 sucked big time, especially with the pandemic and everything, and nobody knew what was okay and what wasn't okay, and what to do and what not to do. Um, but I feel like we have a better grasp on things now um, this year. Um, so over the past year and a half now. I've been getting my health under control. Um, I had migraines for years and years and years and I kept going to the doctor and they couldn't figure out why I was having such severe migraines um, to the point it was making me physically ill. I was actually throwing up and everything and I was falling asleep everywhere. A lot of my YouTube videos, when I do my reviews and stuff, um, you're going to catch me yawning a lot because I was always tired and I never understood why. Um, I never understood why I had such severe migraines. I actually um, went and saw, because um, I, I go to see a family doctor but my mom had to go see another doctor because of um, health concerns and stuff like that. And he is an excellent doctor. And he, so I love the way that he took care of her. So she recommended me to him or had me go and see him. And I went, well, I had to, answer a variety of questions and everything and I he ended up um, having me do an overnight sleep study and um, that didn't turn out good it turns out that I had severe sleep apnea um, my oxygen was 75 I believe and 
um, is pretty terrible. So they set me up with a CPAP machine. <clears throat> so the first one was a face mask and I really couldn't do the face mask. They were like, just give it a couple weeks and you'll get used to it. A lot of people don't like it the first few weeks. <clears throat> so I tried it genuinely tried it. I actually tried it over at the point of where I passed the the time frame of not being able to be eligible to try something else like the nostril things because the insurance wouldn't cover it or they wouldn't do it whatever the case whatever the case was. And then um, they couldn't get my oxygen above an 89 even with that. So, and I just couldn't get used to the face mask. So then they sent me to do, because my first overnight, or my first overnight sleep study was at home. My second one, they came in, like I came in to the hospital and I did an overnight sleep study at the hospital. So they knew how to adjust the pressure and everything like that and they actually gave me nostril ones and they are so much better and make a world of difference and I don't try to rip them off in the middle of the night and everything like I did with the face mask and it got really bad because I used to suffocate in my sleep and there was times where I thought I was gonna die in my sleep because um, <clears throat> I could feel myself not breathing and it was really scary um, sometimes and other times I was too deep in my sleep to do anything about it. It was really crazy. Um, and then, so they adjusted the pressure. They, they, because of the whole COVID thing, they just gave me the nostril pieces to go home with. <clears throat> and um, it made a world of difference. And I felt more alive, more energetic because so at the beginning of this, this was this has been going on for years. I felt so tired all the time, and I gained a bunch of weight because I I ate and I slept. I mean, I worked a full time job, um, sometimes two or three full time jobs in, at the same time. It's been really crazy, um, but. When it came to driving or even sitting down and having a conversation with someone, I felt so tired. It was just really bad. But now I feel more energetic and I'm eating healthier and I, I have been getting my health under control. Um, I'm definitely more lively. I don't fall asleep random hours or, or not random hours but like random times or anything like that and um it's been really good uh, lately i've been getting been getting where i need to be and um the, my goal is to lose a bunch of weight um especially eating healthy and everything um So that's what's been going on. Um, I know, I, I actually uh, saw a few comments under a couple of my videos saying how, um, that it was, I, I can't remember along the lines that they say now, but had something to do with yawning and everything during the video and stuff like that. And yes, it is obnoxious, but I had a legitimate severe health condition that I was fighting, that my body was fighting that I didn't know about at the time. Um, but because of this doctor that my mom had me go see, uh, changed everything after we found out why my health was going down so drastically over the last few years. And now everything is getting better 
And now that everything is getting better and I actually want to go out and do things, the pandemic is causing us to all stay, you know, quarantined or not being able to travel and stuff like that. Eventually we'll get there because we're all um, getting vaccinated, or most of us anyway. <clears throat> I've gotten both of my vaccines already. Um, a lot of my friends and family have. So hopefully we can start traveling this year. If not this year, then definitely next year because the majority of people should be vaccinated across the world by then. So, because it's not just a U.S. problem, it's a global problem. And it's something that has to be dealt with. So, I know this is a really long video, but I don't have anything better to do at the moment. And I just wanted to chat and throw things out there because a lot of people were annoyed or concerned about different things. So I'm just throwing it out there and an update on my health anyway. Um, so yeah. <clears throat> it is such a beautiful day outside, guys. The blue sky, minimal clouds. You probably couldn't hear me that much because I didn't realize that my phone was that close to the um. AC, but it's a beautiful day. I'm currently in Ithaca, New York right now. It's a beautiful place. I'd live here, but it's so expensive. <laughs> so I live over a few hills. <laughs> I'm hoping everything is fine with my friend who's in the hospital right now. I just heard, found out yesterday that a family friend died of COVID from my I heard from my grandparents, so that's really sad because I've known them since I was a child. His wife passed away. Um, she passed away for un um, unrelated to COVID, but he passed away f from COVID. So that's really depressing. <laughs> Right now it's really awkward to talk and everything because there's so many people that are around right now. So they just think that I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Especially all the nurses. That'd be really good. But anyway. short little health lesson or health info for today anyway. <laughs> My nose is stuffy and I don't have any tissues. So, well, that's something to talk about, too. Um, so watch the new Godzilla movie, the Godzilla vs. Khan. And I really, really, really enjoyed it. It was it had such great special effects, and the story was solid, and 
All the actors, I was really surprised that they brought back um, some of the actors from the last Godzilla movie. Um, there were some things that were disappointed or disappointing about it, but other than that, they, they did a pretty good job. Um, my favorite of the newest Godzilla movies is the King of All Monsters, which was the last one before Godzilla vs. Kong. Um, I really thoroughly enjoyed and loved that movie. Um, I watched Kong Skull Island, um, rather recently for the first time, actually. Um, it was later last year that I watched it, but it was a really great movie. Um, my next really, I'm so excited about so many movies coming out this year. <clears throat> because you have um, you have Godzilla vs. Kong you had Wonder Woman 1984 which I watched and I really did love it but there were so many things that could have been cut out of it to make it shorter and more condensed there was a lot of things that they didn't need and it would have made it a million times better um I still love the first one is still superior to the second one um, but they still did a good job with the second one the, the second one was good it was not excellent or great like the first one was um, but I still do think that it has a lot more to offer I still need to watch uh, Zack Snyder's uh, Justice League cut I've only watched the first Justice League. Um, and there's so many there's so many exciting movies coming out this year. I'm so so beyond excited about the new Mortal Kombat. Um, and I can't wait until that comes out on April 23rd. Uh, I can't wait until Scream 5. I can't wait until Halloween Kills, um, the new, the third Conjuring movie, Insidious 5, there's so many great horror movies coming out, I'm really excited about that, my favorite genre is horror, so I'm really happy and glad that it's having kind of a, um, well not even kind of, it is definitely in a renaissance and it's, it's, it enjoying success as it should and I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that sorry that woman over there just distracted me because we made eye contact and it was awkward um like they're doing such a great job the studios are doing such great jobs with horror movies right now especially especially sorry Blumhouse <sighs> Uh, Blumhouse Productions um they I love both of the Happy Death Days um I love what they did with the newest Halloween I just I love I, Jason Blum is an amazing uh very intelligent uh brilliant um mastermind who deserves all the success in the world because he has done an, an amazing job. And there's an itty bitty little green spider on my window. But, anyway, so those are my thoughts on that. I'm kind of worried about Scream 5 because Scream 4 is so severely underrated, and I really love the franchise. Um, I just hope that they don't kill off any of the main characters that have survived up to this point. I am looking forward to seeing where they're going to progress with the story, because Scream is not like scary but it is scary it's scary in the fact that the stalker 
or that the killer is a stalker and he literally runs after you and stalks you through your house windows and sometimes even in your house in different places but I really love the fact that it's a progressive story and that the characters keep moving forward in their story instead of the same rehash thing like each character is in a different position or a different situation or a different uh, spot in their life when it comes to their story with each movie. Like Sydney, for example, went from being a high schooler to a college student, which is natural, real progression. And then she went into witness protection, basically, she went into hiding. And then she became an author, she wanted to tell her stories. And now we're gonna see what her fourth outing is gonna be, or fifth outing is gonna be. <clears throat> Same thing with the other characters. I can't wait to see what happens next. <laughs> Some things that I was disappointed on is the number of shows that have been canceled because of COVID. Even when they were uh, ratings hits for their networks like Siren that's really upsetting <clears throat> I actually haven't even watched the ending of season 3 yet because I'm procrastinating because I don't want it to end and I know that it's a, gonna be a cliffhanger because I didn't end it properly the least that the network could have done is like do one more episode to tie everything together or like a two-hour movie to tie everything together and I would have been happy and fine with that I mean I wouldn't have been happy because they just ended it abruptly because of COVID but it was still a ratings hit they could have continued on with it uh, Siren is one of my favorite shows it deserves so much more um, and that was on the Freeform Network I wish that the CW would have picked it up because the CW would have done amazing with it. Another one that I was disappointed on. Um, well, I'm not disappointed because Freeform also did Shadowhunters, but at least they didn't give it a proper ending like a closure and they did it like a two-hour movie or whatever and they tied up the series wrapped it up and everything instead of just canceling like they did siren which was total bull um but i love the ending well it it wasn't the ending wasn't one of my favorites but it, it was at least an ending um Netflix ended Sabrina, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, which really sucked because that was one of my all-time favorites. It was so dark and they weren't afraid to tell their story the way that they wanted it. And it was absolutely, it was, it was great. <laughs> but I will say that the ending that they did do was closure enough for me to be satisfied with it. Satisfied enough to move on and not ponder over it because it definitely did have an ending. The series that I actually am upset with most about being cancelled is American Gods. American Gods was one of my <clears throat> all-time favorites. Um, that show deserved so much more and all the success, just like Siren. Um, and it wasn't afraid to tell its story the way that they wanted. Uh, the special effects were crazy, the actors were excellent, the characters were so good. And they were so close to the finish line. The least that the network could have done is just 
um, renew it for a fourth and final season instead of ending it the way that they did. That was the most upsetting to me when it so far when it came to series finales or season finales, series finales because they're ending the series. But the good thing is, is I I have read a lot about the creators of American God shopping it around to finish off the story at least. So that's really good, and I'm really happy and excited about that, especially since um, it's a show with such quality and. Um, shock value and it just gave it gave no craps about what anybody thought about anything it did its own thing and people liked it or they didn't and that was just the way it went <clears throat> I think stars is a great network they just make a lot of terrible decisions when it comes to ending things um well, I did turn off the AC, but I guess I have to turn it back on because it is getting a little hot in here. Whoop. I wonder when my friend is going to be done with her. <clears throat> with her thing in there. I hope everything is going okay. <laughs> A show that I'm really happy about right now is Supergirl. The way that they're ending it and bringing everything to a close because the scene I cannot um, give credit enough to the CW they have done such an amazing job with all their shows and Mark Pedowitz um, I think that's how you say his last name anyway he's brilliant um, Ian obviously knows how to run things, and I wholeheartedly believe that he is doing an excellent job with the network. The CW is, I love how the CW, the CW does at least try to give closure to fans, regardless if they're going to cancel or end something. <clears throat> like they ended Supergirl, but way in advance, it wasn't a cancellation, they're just ending the series, they're finishing out the story, but they didn't wait until they were in the middle of shooting their last episode to let them know that they were ending the series so they still renewed it for another season to end it um, because they are faithful to their fans the only one that I was absolutely sad, upset about when it came to the CW abruptly ending things is with Rain I was really upset with the way that that was handled but at least, again, they ended it with closure. Like, because it's a historical, well, historical fantasy series. And um, they at least ended it on the note that they should have. But I wish that they would have done a fifth and final season instead of rushing a series finale into the last episode because they were already filming the fourth season when it was announced that they were ending it so they didn't have enough time to come up with an excellent ending like they could have um, but it's okay because Rachel Scarston is on Batwoman as Alice, and I just can't imagine her not being Alice in Batwoman. She is literally the highlight of the show. 
her and Mary are my two favorites of Batwoman. And I think that's... <sighs> so, it's gonna sound really weird. I was never a Ruby Rose, a Ruby Rose fan. <clears throat> I didn't care about Orange is the New Black. Um, but they hired Ruby Rose as Batwoman and I watched it anyway and I thought that the first season was solid I really loved it I it's gonna sound really weird to say this but Ruby Rose was really bad as Kate Kane but she was really good as Batwoman I don't know if that makes any sense or how I can describe it to make sense it's just like Ben Affleck, I think that he was an awful choice for Batman, but I think that he pulls off of Bruce Wayne pretty well, because Bruce Wayne is arrogant, cocky, billionaire, whatever, um, and then Batman is the hero, which is his alter ego, whatever you want to call it. But Kate Kane was better as Batwoman than she was as Kate Kane. So when they did the second season and replaced and not replaced her, but got a new Batwoman, um, I was really nervous with the way that they were going to go with the story route. But they have done an excellent job so far, and I really love the new woman that plays for Batwoman. Um, I love the way that the story is going in Season 2 of Batwoman. Um, I like how Mary and Alice are both getting more screen time like they should because they are... They're just so amazing. I mean, it should just be called Alice instead of Batwoman, but whatever. Um, I think that that would be cool to have a spin-off show with Alice, even though it would really hurt Batwoman to, um, to have Alice leave the show. <clears throat> but they could have a spin-off of Alice and have her as, like, a vigilante and a reluctant hero, but somebody who's so unpredictable that she, she puts the fear of God into bad guys, even though she kind of is a bad guy but isn't a bad guy um because she's so unpredictable and um I don't know I I just think that um she is amazing and it's really sad because I do find myself rooting for the the villains because I'm not about villains who are all about power. I'm about villains who have a deep backstory and somebody that you can understand why they're doing the way, doing the things that they're doing. Um, for example, Catherine Pierce on The Vampire Diaries. Um, Elena said it best on that show when she said, um, you aren't born evil, life made you that way. And that's the same with Alice from Batwoman. It took a lot of drastic steps to make these women, or villains, villains, the way that they turned out in life. And it's really sad. And you want to root for them, and you want to root for the good guys at the same time. So it's just like one of those things where they're like, they're so good and they just need to stay in the show, but they need to go away because they're causing so much chaos. Uh, but they are brilliantly written and fleshed out, and, um, they're played brilliantly, obviously. Um, but I, I can't wait to see more Batwoman Season 2. Look at that, guys. We're almost at 35 minutes. It's pretty crazy. I very rarely do long videos. But I figured, since I'm just chilling, that I have enough time to make 
like, I don't know, get a few things off my shoulders, chest, whatever you want to call it, say, whatever. Um, and to just chat about movies and shows like I usually do on my channel. Um, I'm really trying to think of different creative ways to get more uh, subscribers and everything. And eventually I want to <clears throat> start my own business with photography because I really want to start merchandising my photographs that I take. Um, like, because I can have it done and have my pictures that I take added to mugs and uh, different fabrics like blankets and pillows and stuff like that and I think that that would be really cool to start a business that way and I'm really trying to um, kind of jumpstart my YouTube more like find out different ways that I can add more uh, subscribers and viewers and stuff because I really would like to do my own thing instead of work for a corporation or on somebody else's time I want to work on my own time but I also want to do things that I mean I love my job but I want to do things like my photography and um, merchandising and stuff like that I think that that would be a really cool idea uh, to start and to work on, I'd really love that. Um, that's why I spend so much on my phone, to, because the biggest selling point for me um, with cell phones is the battery life and the camera quality. <clears throat> and I have a Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, so I have a really great camera, especially on my rear camera. And I'm able to film really high quality videos. I'm able to film or to take really great pictures with it. I don't have a camera or anything like that. I used to have a really old fashioned camera that I just um, found about a week ago that I dug out of one of my moving boxes. And um, it's pretty cool because I still have the memory chip in it so I'm gonna take it down to Walmart and see what's on the see what I have on it but anyway yeah I'd love to get into the merchandising business and and do stuff that is um, more uh, how do I say it more free um, because it will be my time, it will be my projects, it will be stuff that I want to do, and it will be stuff that makes me and other people happy because people love to look at artwork, they love to look at different pictures, they love to look at, um, like different sayings or photography on mugs or posters or, um, blankets, especially blankets, I have like at least 10 blankets on my house. It's really crazy. Sherpa blankets, comforters, the whole nine yards. I, I love blankets and pillows. <laughs> but I feel like I, I could make somebody's day by doing that versus what I'm doing now, working my job, having to clock in and out and do things on a corporation's time versus my time is what I should say. I want to do my own small business and and I want to open up a restaurant and I want to open up a small hotel. I want to eventually want to uh, expand and grow and do things that I want to do. But we're working on my health at the moment which is most important and then we're gonna work on everything else. I'm working on my credit again. I bought a house last year, last July. Um, I bought a new car, so I'm, I'm, I'm getting there, so, 
But I th we have about 10 minutes before my time is all up on my memory card. <laughs> but I just wanted to get a few things off my chest and let you guys, I don't know, talk and about different topics and stuff like that and where I was and where I'm at and where I want to be. Um, at least everybody has their hopes and dreams of what they want to do. Especially when it comes to health and well-being. So, I will talk to you later, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe to my page, and I will talk to you later.